The Lord be with you. Today is our annual Lessons and Carols service, so um, we'll have an opportunity to sing a lot of Christmas carols, and uh, Rick will read scripture for us. We will, um, so just follow along in your bulletin. Our gospel text is about uh, Mary and Joe. <coughs> excuse me, Mary and Joseph bringing um, the baby Jesus for a dedication as well as Mary's purification after childbirth. And we hear Simeon um, give us the nunc dimittis, now I may depart. Our gathering carol is Love Has Come. Please rise. Jesus is the bright morning star, shines light in the world. Jesus was, <clears throat> was born in the, <coughs> excuse me, Jesus was born in the midst of injustice and poverty. God so loved the world that God sent Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. Sing to God a new song. Today Christ is born. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Gracious God of heaven and earth, you have thrown a lifetime to us in our dark a lifeline to us in our darkness a beam of light that shines through Jesus though born in a manger he is the firstborn of all creation though crucified on a cross he is the lord of life fill us with the wonder and joy of his presence in the world and in our hearts amen
The first lesson is from the first chapter of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light unto the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from the fifth chapter of Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. The word of the Lord.
The third lesson is from the first chapter of Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The word of the Lord. The fourth reading is from the second chapter of Matthew. Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt. 
and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Raman, wailing in loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. The word of the Lord. Our gospel reading this morning comes from the second chapter of Luke. Please rise. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they op offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit <clears throat> rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, 
Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. Then as a widow to the age of 84, she never left the temple but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Ever have one of those uh, moments in your life that it almost seems miraculous? I told you about the time I was accepted into seminary, didn't I? It's rather, um, I think I have, but I'm going to share it anyway. I had graduated from college, and then Mick and I got married the next fall. So I thought, well, I'll just take a year off and start seminary in the next fall. But it was um, the day after Thanksgiving, and I was at my home church. I was working there. It was a volunteer position as the youth director, and my pastor said, Pastor Schoenbaum said, Dan, when are you going to start seminary? And I said, well, I thought I'd start next fall. And he said, well, what are you going to do this winter? I said, what I'm doing now. And he said, why don't we get you in seminary? I said, well, is it possible? He says, I don't know. I'll call. So he calls up the seminary, and he spoke with the interim dean of students, Edgar Carlson. Dr. Carlson was a kind old man. He had been the president of St. Olaf College, retired, and now they, the the dean of students uh, had retired at, from the seminary, so they brought in Edgar Carlson as an interim. It was the day after Thanksgiving, and he said, well, have him come and see me this afternoon and tell him to bring his college transcripts. So I swung by the college, picked up my transcripts, went over to the seminary, and met with uh, Dr. Carlson, sat in his office, and he said, let me see your transcripts, and he looked at him, and he said, uh, well, because of the recommendation of your pastor and the fact that you graduated with honors from, your, from college, and I go, I did? <laughs> and he said, well, it says that right here. He said, go up and register. He says, can you have your letters of recommendation to me by Monday? 
And I said, I think so. So I went up and registered, and uh, the registrar uh, said, well, this is a little unusual, but we'll register you. And then I went and visited some professors from college and got letters of recommendation. They gave a letter of recommendation to my pastor, and I said they need it Monday. Monday I came walking in the office, and there's a secretary I hadn't seen before. And I said, uh, I'm Dan Freeberg. I came to see Dr. Carlson. And his door was open just a crack, and he comes running out, and he has... He says, oh, Mr. Freeberg, good to see you. Give, and he grabbed the papers out of my hand, and he's, he said, uh, thank you. And he was, went back into his office, but the secretary, who you could tell was running the place, said, she looked at me and she said, uh, what was that? And I said, oh, letters of recommendation. And she said, Dr. Carlson, don't those belong to me? And he walked back and he said, uh, oh yes, this is Mr. Freeberg. I registered him yesterday. Or I registered him on Friday. She evidently was supposed to be working on Friday, but she was snowed in over Thanksgiving, wherever she went for Thanksgiving. And it was kind of an awkward moment. She said, she took those papers. She said, well, Dr. Carlson, this is highly irregular. And he got this little sheepy smile on his face, and he said, just stick with me. As though he was going to teach her a few things, which you could tell she was not teachable. So we're all standing there, it's one of those awkward, silent moments, and my pastor came walking in, and I said, well, this is my pastor, Bill Schonenbaum. They were already familiar with him because he had uh, just gotten his PhD, and he broke the silence by saying, and I think this belongs to you, and he handed it to the secretary. And we all stood there for a moment, awkward silence again. We said goodbye, and Pastor Schoenenbaum and I left. When we got to the sidewalk on this bitterly cold winter day in Minnesota, I looked at him and I said, I don't know exactly what happened in there. And he said, I think it was the Holy Spirit, Dan. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I've always thought of that moment as sort of a magical moment also. Maybe one of the, if I had gone through the regular process, I wouldn't be here. But um, the reason I bring that up is Mary and Joseph coming to the temple seemed to be one of those magical moments when everything converged and you could definitely see the Holy Spirit working. It was 30 days after the birth of a child, when you had your first child, 30 days, if it was a male child, you had to go and uh, have a rite of purification done at the temple. So Mary and Joseph were making that trek. But we also see they waited until it was 40 days because after 40 days, you're supposed to dedicate your firstborn male son to the Lord. So in this incident in Luke chapter 2, we see them doing both of those events at one time make that one long journey. But we also see how faithful, there were very faithful, observant Jews, Mary and Joseph. They had Jesus circumcised on the eighth day, just like they were supposed to. They were now making this trek to the temple 
for the rite of purification and the dedication of the baby Jesus. So they're all there. And when they get there, Simeon, Simeon who had been promised by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he saw the Messiah. Simeon was <clears throat> told by the Holy Spirit to go to the temple that day. And he was expecting now to see God's Messiah. Of that, Frederick Buechner writes this, Jesus was still in diapers when his parents brought him to the temple in Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As the custom was and to offer a sacrifice, and that's when old Simeon spotted him. Years before, he had been told he wouldn't die until he had seen the Messiah with his own two eyes, and time was running out. When the moment finally came, one look through his cataract lenses was all it took. He asked if it would be all right to hold the baby in his arms, and they told him to go ahead. Lord, he said, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. The baby playing with the fringes of his beard, the parents were pleased as punch, and so he blessed them for good measure. When something about this mother stopped him and his expression changed. What he saw on her face was a long way off, but it was there so plainly he couldn't pretend. A sword will pierce through your soul, he said. Of that, Bickner writes, Bickner writes this, he would rather have bitten off his tongue than said it, but in that holy place he felt he had no choice. Then he handed her back. He handed her back the baby. <coughs> excuse me, and departed in something less than the perfect peace he dreamed of all he dreamed of all the long years of his waiting. Swaddling clothes Jesus was wrapped in. Swaddling clothes with the very, it's the very same word used for the clothes they put around a, um, a body or a funeral. So we're reminded that Jesus, yes, is the light of the world, the savior of the world, but we're reminded of his death. So we have pe four people together, Mary, Joseph, the baby, Jesus, and Simeon. And then the fifth one arrives, and that's Anna, the prophetess, who also blesses the parents and now tells everyone in the temple that Jesus is the Messiah, the promised one. And what does that mean for us? In um, the 1930s, Amy Simple McPherson started the Four Square Gospel Church. How many have heard of a Four Square Gospel Church? We have at least one in our town. Well, Amy uh, McPherson got a lot of things wrong when she started that house, that, that, that denomination. At least we Lutherans would think she got a lot of things wrong. One thing she did right she didn't want to call her churches, churches. She wanted to call them lighthouses. Why? Because they were the place that revealed the light of the world to the world. Lighthouses, that's what we are. We're revealing Jesus, the one that Simeon spotted, the light to bring light to all the nations. And we're in the business of bringing that light and that hope, starting with us and shining forth from here. Amen.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. Rejoicing in the light of Christ that shines upon us, we pray for the church, the world, and all according to their needs. Blessed are you, O God, for the salvation revealed in the face of Christ. Reveal the glory of your loving presence in our congregation and fill our hearts with songs of your praise. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed are you for the children in our midst. Raise up for them faithful families, mentors, guides, and teachers, and make them joyous, healthy, and kind. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> Blessed are you for the hope you send among the nations. Stir leaders to act with righteousness and peace that nations will see your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed are you for coming to us in our weakness. Shower healing and hope on all for whom the future seems to hold more threat than promise. Send your healing especially to Teresa Baumgartner, Peggy Eaton, Tiffany Giles, Randy Greenwood, Karen Groves, Maynard, the Reverend Maynard Hansen, Dixie Hicks, Jim Lampy, Betty Lassant, Karen Motion, Rose McGiles, Darlene McLaughlin, Pat Morrison, Suzanne No, Trish Norberg, Grant Reed, Vera Rosso, Jim Runyon, Mary Thomas, Janice Trotter, David Ugla, and Ramona Vaughn. Are there any others? Blessed are you, eternal God, for the saints. Comfort those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Don Bechtel, William Sparks, Marilyn Montell, and Evie Weir. Lord, in your mercy. Hear the hopes and prayers of our hearts, O God, and magnify our joy at the birth of your light among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Good and loving God. May the good Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift your hearts to him in praise. Let us offer praises true. Gratefully we sing. To the Lord our King. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may, may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever.
All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
now the, may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We give you thanks, O God, that in this bread and cup of Christ's very life, you give us food for our journey. As you led the Magi by a star, as you brought the Holy Family home again, guide us on the way unfolding before us. Wherever we go, may our lives proclaim good news of great joy in Jesus Christ our Lord. I do not have any announcements other than have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Well, you know why? I should announce the fact that there is a funeral tomorrow, Don Bechtel's funeral. He'll have an interment at the cemetery at 10, a memorial service at 11. There will not be any peacemakers tomorrow, I imagine because of the funeral. And Janine, do you have something to say? Receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take. The love of God that gives us courage and strength and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about now and forever. Amen. So you can just go when they start singing, okay? Just, just hang tight until they start singing. I'll cue you with my thumbs up.
guided by the gospel, we welcome Jesus. Go in peace and serve the Lord.